Step back with us in time to the year 1966 when a thrilling and visually stunning cinematic masterpiece known as Daimajin took audiences by storm. This Japanese fantasy film, directed by Kimiyoshi Yasuda, transported viewers to a mesmerizing world filled with ancient legends, towering statues, and a formidable deity known as Daimajin. With its unique blend of historical drama, samurai action, and supernatural elements, Daimajin captivated audiences and left an indelible mark on the kaiju genre. In the year 1966, a colossal force awakened in the heart of feudal Japan. A stone deity long forgotten rose from its slumber, its wrath ready to consume all who dared oppose it. Legends will collide and the fate of a village hangs in the balance. Brace yourself for an epic tale of power, vengeance, and the unyielding force of nature. Daimajin awaits. Ready to unleash its fury upon those who dare cross its path, are you prepared for the awakening? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Kaiju Era Amidst the realm of the Kaiju films, where towering creatures emerged from atomic chaos or remnants of ancient beasts, a different kind of monster lurks in the shadows. Behold the enigmatic Daimajin, a demon god steeped in the legends of ancient Japan. Unlike its animalistic counterparts, this deity emerges from the very mountains, a stone idol brought to life by a vengeful spirit. Its wrath knows no bounds, as it descends upon those who dare disrespect its name and defy its devoted followers. But there's another distinctive aspect that sets Daimajin apart from its modern kaiju brethren. While Godzilla and Gamera stomp through contemporary landscapes. Daimajin's stories unfold in a bygone era. With each installment of the franchise, we are transported to a world shrouded in the mists of the past, where honor, samurai swords, and ancient beliefs intertwine. However, in the year 2010, audiences were transported to a world where the echoes of the past resonated in the present. Here, a brand new Daimajin emerges, shattering the boundaries of time to reclaim its role as harbinger of justice. With the majestic mountains and and bustling cities as its backdrop, Daimajin Canon weaves a gripping narrative that melds ancient folklore with the fast-paced rhythms of modern-day society. Origin. In a time long past, a courageous warrior known as Shino stood valiantly against the formidable might of Daimajin, the ancient deity. Through skill and determination, Shino emerged victorious, trapping the vengeful spirit within the confines of a stone statue. Thus began a new chapter in the epic saga of Daimajin, a tale of summoning and salvation. Henceforth, the power of Daimajin lay dormant, awaiting the call of those in dire need. Only by rousing the spirit from its eternal slumber within the the statue could its might be unleashed. The resolute few who possessed the knowledge and courage to awaken Daimajin sought his aid in times of great peril and injustice. Whispers of the legend spread far and wide, drawing those desperate for hope to the enigmatic statue. For within its stony shell resided a force capable of toppling tyrants, defending the innocent, and restoring balance to a world plagued by darkness. The call to awaken Daimajin echoed through the ages, reverberating across lands and generations, a beacon of salvation for those who dared to believe in its power. The movie Daimajin, 1966. Amidst a village gripped by fear, the ground trembles beneath the feet of peasants, a haunting sign of an ancient spirit seeking its liberation. The people huddle in terror, their prayers echoing through the night, beseeching the mighty Daimajin to remain imprisoned within the unforgiving rocks. But their devotions are not witnessed solely by the divine. A noble ruler, Lord Hanabasa, stands among the masses, a beacon of justice in a troubled land. Yet as the villagers fervent pleas ascend to the heavens, a shadow lurks within the heart of the ruling hierarchy. Samanosuke, the treacherous chamberlain, bides his time patiently, awaiting an opportune moment to seize power and overthrow his benevolent lord. The earthquakes provide the perfect distraction, a veil under which he can unleash his wicked intentions. In a brutal coup, Hanabasa and his beloved wife fall victim to the merciless blades of Samanosuke's henchmen. But fate, fueled by the indomitable spirit of resistance, 
grants a glimmer of hope to the fallen lord's children. Guided by the gallant samurai Gogenta, they evade the clutches of evil, their survival igniting the flames of rebellion. As darkness descends upon the land, the village shrine stands as a testament to both despair and defiance. Samonosuke's enforcers desecrate the sacred ground, forbidding any further prayers or gatherings, heedless of the priestess Shinobu's ominous warning. With heavy hearts, the despondent villagers disperse while Shinobu, a beacon of unwavering determination, retreats to her humble abode, contemplating the weight of her duty. Amidst the rugged mountains, a forbidden land shrouded in mystery, Shinobu finds herself thrust into a role she never anticipated. Unbeknownst to her, she becomes the beacon of hope, the final line of defense for the orphans left in the wake of Hanabasa's tragic demise. Alongside her, Kogenta, the valiant samurai, stands as their unwavering protector. Guiding the orphans up treacherous slopes, Shinobu leads them to the heart of the forbidden territory, where an ancient stone idol, Daimajin, looms half-buried. A sanctuary awaits them nearby, a hidden temple known only to Shinobu. It is their sole refuge in a world consumed by darkness. Time passes relentlessly, a decade slipping away as the children mature under the watchful gaze of the stone deity. Tadafumi, now a young man on the cusp of his 18th birthday, harbors a burning desire deep within him. It is the longing for justice, the yearning to reclaim his rightful throne. The villagers, ravaged by hardship, bear the weight of Samonosuke's tyrannical rule. Forced into back-breaking labor, they yearn for liberation. Their spirits smoldering with defiance. The 10th anniversary of the fateful coup marks a turning point. Surviving retainers of the fallen Hanabasa dynasty stealthily infiltrate the village, their ranks swelling with determination. The stage is set for rebellion, the seeds of revolution taking root amidst the oppressed masses. The time has come to challenge Samonosuke's iron grip, to defy the cruelty that has plagued them for far too long. In the heart of the oppressed village, Kogenta's valiant journey to rally the old retainers takes an unexpected turn. His noble mission becomes a perilous endeavor as he falls into the clutches of the enemy, ensnared in a treacherous trap. A courageous young boy, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness, carries the urgent message to Tadafumi and Kazaza, the siblings whose lives are intertwined with the fate of their people. Driven by unwavering bravery, Tadafumi ventures forth, determined to rescue his imprisoned comrade. Little does he know that Samonosuke, the tyrant ruling with an iron fist, has laid a cunning snare anticipating their every move. The trap is sprung, ensnaring both Tadafumi and Kogenta, leaving them trapped in the clutches of a impending doom. Meanwhile, Shinobu, the steadfast priestess, attempts to reason with the intoxicated tyrant, hoping to kindle a flicker of humanity within his callous heart. But her prayers fall on deaf ears, and in a fit of rage, Samonosuke commits an unforgivable act, murdering the priestess who dare challenge his power. Unleashing his fury upon the sacred traditions, Samonosuke orders the demolition of the revered idol Daimajin, seeking to obliterate any remnants of hope within the hearts of the villagers. With the stage set for despair, a courageous crew ascends the treacherous mountains driven by a destructive purpose. Their weapons strike relentlessly, sledgehammers pounding against the stone deity, but the mountain god will not be silenced so easily. As the blows rain down upon Daimajin, a haunting spectacle unfolds. Blood, dark and foreboding, seeps from the wounds inflicted upon the majestic idol. A chilling realization dawns upon the soldiers, their hearts gripped by fear as the ground beneath them shatters, a gaping maw devouring their feeble attempts at destruction. Their desperate flight is in vain, for the wrath of the ancient deity knows no mercy, meeting out justice with a merciless vengeance. As the peril reaches its crescendo, the dormant deity awakens to the pleas of Kozaza, her voice resounding with desperation and determination. With bated breath, she kneels before the towering idol, beseeching Daimajin to unleash its divine wrath upon the wicked Sama and to rescue her beloved brother from the clutches of impending doom. Within the confines of the fortress, Tadafumi and Kogenta stand bound, their destinies hanging in the balance. Time slips away, each passing moment heralding a cruel fate drawing nearer. But, unbeknownst to them, Kozaza's unwavering faith leads her to make a profound sacrifice. In a fearless act of devotion, she attempts to surrender her life to Daimajin, casting herself over the precipice of a thundering 
waterfall. Yet, fate intervenes and the boy, the guardian of hope, halts her descent, persevering her life for a higher purpose. In that pivotal moment, the slumbering spirit within the idol stirs. The earthquakes beneath the weight of the ancient power as the stone and soil that have concealed the lower half of the colossal statue crumble away. With a ground-shaking stride, the 50-foot figure emerges, stepping into the clearing with an awe-inspiring presence. Kozaza, humbled and reverent, prostrates herself before the towering behemoth, her faith rewarded. As the veil of stone shatters, the true visage of Daimajin is unveiled, a grotesque shogun of vengeance, a specter of wrath personified. Its eyes burn with an otherworldly fire, a gaze that pierces the darkness, promising retribution upon those who dare to defy its divine mandate. The time for mercy has passed. The time for justice has come. With every fiber of its being, Daimajin prepares to unleash a torrent of righteous fury upon the malevolence that has plagued the land. In a cataclysmic display of fury, Daimajin descends upon the village. Its divine wrath is unleashed in a tempest of destruction. With every thunderous step, buildings crumble as the vengeful deity carves a path Path towards his ultimate target, the treacherous Samanosuke. Chaos reigns as the villagers flee for their lives, seeking refuge amidst the ruins. Amidst the bedlam, Tadafumi and Kogenta break free from their confinements, their spirits ignited with newfound determination. Guided by their unyielding will to survive and protect what remains of their shattered homeland, they join forces with Kosaza, their paths converging in the face of impending doom. Together, they bear witness to the wrathful spectacle and Folding before their very eyes. Daimajin, an indomitable immortal god of boundless rage, towers over the ruins of the palace, clutching the quivering form of the trembling Samanosuke. The wretched tyrant, consumed by terror, becomes a pawn in the hands of the very force he sought to control. The chisel, a grim reminder of failed attempts to vanquish the deity, finds its mark as Daimajin impales Samanosuke upon a jagged remnant of the palace walls. But even in the aftermath of a Fulfilling its blood-soaked mission, the immortal god continues to unleash his wrath upon the remnants of the village. With unyielding fervor, Daimajin rampages through the land, leaving a path of destruction behind him. Kosaza, resolute and steadfast in her loyalty, offers herself once more, beseeching the deity to cease his rampage. It is her tears, born of compassion and desperation, that stir something within the heart of the vengeful spirit. In a breathtaking moment, the colossal figure freezes in its tracks. Its destructive might have held at bay. Transformed back into a motionless statue, Daimajin serves as evidence of strength found in love and empathy, even within the most wrathful of deities. A celestial orb of luminous energy emerges from within, soaring into the heavens, a symbol of redemption and release. And as the statue crumbles to dust, the remnants of the god's divine presence dissipate, carried away in the wind. We're safe now, my lord. Good. Did Daimajin impress you? In the realm of kaiju cinema, where behemoths dominate the screen, Daimajin stands as a unique offering with its 83-minute runtime. True to the genre's tradition, the eponymous giant remains dormant until the final moments, allowing the film to balance its budget while showcasing the remarkable talents of director of photography Fujio Morita and effects wizard Yoshiyuki Kuroda. The result is a visual feast adorned with some of the most breathtaking effects and trick photography of its time. Within this spectacle, Daimajin takes an unexpected turn, diverging from the anticipated path of a grand kaiju parade. Instead, it unfurls as a meticulously crafted samurai epic set against the backdrop of Edo period drama. The story, though not what one might expect from a colossal spectacle, is masterfully executed, immersing viewers in a world of honor, intrigue, and the unwavering spirit of the samurai. What's next for Daimajin? Fortunately, the Daimajin trilogy was destined to unfold in a truly remarkable manner. As if guided by unseen force, these films were crafted in succession, seamlessly flowing from one to the next. The gods of cinema smiled upon this endeavor, ensuring that each installment was helmed by a distinguished director, a true virtuoso of their craft. 
The journey began with Yasuda, who set the stage for the awe-inspiring saga of Daimajin. With meticulous care, he breathed life into the first film, leaving audiences captivated by the majestic power of the ancient deity. However, the story did not conclude at that point, as the baton was gracefully passed to Kenji Masumi, a seasoned master of the cinematic realm. Known for his brilliance in directing the renowned Zatoichi series, Mitsumi embraced the challenge of the Daimajin sequel. His visionary touch infused the narrative with a sense of grandeur and intensity, paving the way for a truly unforgettable experience. And then, like a master stroke of destiny, Katsumori stepped into the realm of Daimajin with a formidable repertoire of Zatoichi and samurai tales, Mori brought his own artistry to the table. Like a maestro conducting a symphony of emotions, he guided the final chapter of the trilogy, ensuring that it resonated deep within the souls of the audience. movie, The Return of Daimajin, 1966. In the rugged land where treacherous mountains guarded secrets and precious resources were scarce, a sinister plot was brewing in the shadows. The malevolent Mikoshiba clan, weary of their own hardships, devised a cunning scheme to seize power and vanquish their rivals, the noble Chigusa and Nagoshi clans. These two allied kingdoms thrived in the embrace of Lake Yakimono, a shimmering oasis of life and prosperity. Yet, on a solitary island within the lake, an enigmatic statue stood as Silent Guardian, a deity cloaked in mystery. Legends whispered of an omen, a harbinger of doom. If the statue's impassive face were to flush scarlet, it would signal the imminent downfall of the kingdoms. The tale ignited fear in the hearts of those who cherished their homelands, fueling their determination to protect their heritage at any cost. As the echoes of a solemn funeral service faded, a glimmer of hope emerged. A band of escaped Mikoshiba serfs approached, bearing humble offerings of rice, a plea for sanctuary under the benevolent rule of Lord Juro Jakuza. The gracious lord, moved by their plight, extended his sheltering embrace to these seemingly desperate souls. But all was not as it seemed. The serfs, mere pawns in the Mikoshiba clan's sinister game, concealed a treacherous secret within their bales of rice. Like wolves in sheep's clothing, Mikoshiba warriors lay in wait, ready to strike with merciless precision. In a thunderous upheaval, the Mikoshiba soldiers triumphantly seized control of the Chikuza castle, overthrowing Lord Juro as he narrowly slipped through the labyrinthine corridors, guided by the whispers of a secret passage. Defeated but not broken, he eluded their grasp, his spirit aflame with a vengeance. With the castle firmly in their grip, the nefarious Lord Danjo Mikoshiba marshaled his forces, their march resonating with the echoes of impending doom. Their target? The Nagoshi Kingdom, where Juro sought refuge. Lord Nagoshi, defiant in the face of tyranny, refused to yield, but his defiance only led to his demise. His life, snuffed out like a flickering candle in the gales of war. Now, Katsushigi Nagoshi, the son of the fallen lord, found himself trapped in the clutches of Mikoshiba's ruthless henchmen. A pawn in the ruthless game, his life dangled precariously, a fragile thread teetering on the edge of oblivion. The Mikoshiba forces demanded Juro surrender, ready to trade blood for blood. Amidst the turmoil, Lady Sayari Nagoshi, bearing the weight of grief for her departed father, ventured to the sacred island seeking solace and divine intervention. The shrine stood as a beacon of hope, its hollowed ground resonating with the prayers of a kingdom in turmoil. But as fate would have it, the Nagoshi army descended upon the island, their rage manifesting in the desecration of the god's sacred idol. A tempest of fury consumed Lady Sayari, her righteous anger ignited as the statue crumbled before her eyes. In a moment of defiance, she hurled herself toward the chaos, consumed by the explosion. As the debris settled, she emerged unscathed, encased in an ethereal shroud of stone, her essence forever intertwined with the god she had fervently implored. While Mikoshiba's soldiers callously dismissed her as lifeless, an astute aid unearthed her unharmed, living evidence of enduring power of faith and divine protection. Firm in her conviction, Lady Sayari chose to remain on the island, her unwavering belief rooted in the lingering presence of the god's spirit, an unseen guardian of their fractured world. In a twist of fate, the currents of destiny guided a skiff carrying the unconscious form of Lord Juro in the very bay where Sayari stood watch. Awakened by the sea's embrace, he regained his strength and his purpose reignited with a burning determination to capture Lord Mikoshiba and trade him for Katsushigi's life. 
However, peril lurked in the shadows, for Mikoshiba's soldiers had discovered their pursuit. In a desperate bid for survival, Juro's vessel found itself ensnared by treacherous rocks, a deadly trap closing in on their vulnerable position. But as their enemies closed in for the kill, an inexplicable force intervened, a macabre dance of fate that pulled the enemy skiff into a watery abyss, their ambitions vanquished by an otherworldly power. In the depths of despair, their spirits crushed under the weight of captivity. They found themselves ensnared by the cruel clutches of their enemies. Sayari, her unwavering resolve tested to the breaking point, suffered the ultimate sacrifice. Bound by the shackles of injustice, she was condemned to a fiery death. Her life offered as a grim spectacle for all to witness. Yet in her darkest hour, Sayari summoned the remnants of her strength, her voice piercing the heavens in a desperate plea to the god she had so faithfully entreated. Her prayer resonated through the flames, a fervent plea for divine protection and the restoration of her shattered people. Tears streamed down her face, each drop a testament to her unwavering faith. Miraculously, the winds stirred a gust of otherworldly power, extinguishing the the merciless inferno that threatened to consume her, rose from the depths of the bay, his colossal form emerging in all its majestic glory, a force of nature incarnate. He unleashed his wrath upon the land, triggering landslides that swallowed the very island that had been desecrated. Unyielding, the god parted the waters of the lake, carving a path towards the shore. His arrival struck terror into the hearts of the Mikoshiba clan, their audacious reign crumbling beneath the weight of the divine retribution. With a single mind mighty gesture, the god shattered the stake that bound Sayari, gently laying her lifeless form upon the earth. Without hesitation, the god surged forth, a relentless force bent on pursuing Lord Mikoshiba, the architect of unspeakable suffering. The castle, their last bastion of defense, proved futile in the face of his relentless advance. The Mikoshiba clan, desperate to halt his progress, launched enormous grappling hooks, hoping to ensnare the god's formidable might. But their feeble attempts were in vain. The god, undeterred by their pitiful machinations. Undaunted, the Mikushiba clan resorted to desperate measures, resorting to explosive traps and a torrential downpour of stone, seeking to bury the indomitable deity. Yet, like an indomitable force of nature, the god pressed on, each obstacle proving futile in the face of his relentless determination. A boulder hurtled through the air, pulverizing Mikoshiba's lieutenant, an embodiment of divine judgment striking down the wicked. Cornered, Lord Mikoshiba sought to escape, his cowardice propelling him toward the sanctuary of the lake. But the god, in an act of divine justice, thwarted his flight, forcing the boat to face its pursuer. With a blazing ball of fire, the god ignited the vessel, its fiery embrace sealing Mikoshiba's fate. Desperately clinging to the mast, the treacherous lord found himself ensnared, his plight mirroring that of Sayari's agonizing crucible. As the burning ship succumbed to the merciless sea, a tempestuous storm unleashed by the god began to recede. The skies clearing as if touched by a celestial grace, Sayari liberated from the chains of suffering, rushed into the lake, her voice rising in a prayer of gratitude. The god, now turned towards her, transformed once more, his stone visage softening in the water, merging with the very lake that bore witness to their epic struggle. In the wake of their triumph, a profound silence settled over the land, broken only by the resonant tolling of the sunken bell. Its resounding chime echoed from the depths of the lake, a resolute proclamation that the kingdoms would forever be steeped in a lasting peace, a testament to the enduring power of sacrifice and faith. Was Daimajin's return a success? In the scorching summer of August 1966, Return of Daimajin roared into the cinematic landscape, bringing with it a fresh ensemble that breathed new life into the awe-inspiring legend. While the cast may have undergone a complete transformation, the heart of the story remained firmly rooted in the captivating premise of its predecessor. Once again, peaceful villages succumbed to the cruel grasp of the insidious lord, driving the desperate masses to seek refuge in the enigmatic embrace of the Daimajin statue. Now perched upon a mystifying island, their fervent prayers became a symphony of hope, igniting the dormant titan into a climatic battle against the forces of darkness, culminating in a mesmerizing display of divine retribution. At the heart of this magnificent trilogy lies the imaginative mind of screenwriter Tessaro Yoshida, who deftly weaves variations on a compelling theme. While the core narrative may possess familiar elements, it is within the nuances of human emotion and profound 
profound character development that these tales truly shine. Return of Daimajin and its predecessors stand as shining examples of the power of storytelling, gripping audiences with their mesmerizing drama and resonating on a profound level. Undoubtedly, the most spine-tingling moments in each film are the sequences that showcases Daimajin's wrathful onslaught. Like bolts of lightning, these chilling spectacles electrify the screen, leaving viewers in awe of the sheer magnitude and grandeur of the giant's fury. Dae Studios, eager to compete with the giants of the industry, astutely recognized the importance of a masterful score and enlisted the legendary composer Akira Ifakube. Known for his exceptional work in the Godzilla franchise, Ifakube's musical prowess infused the Daimajin movies with a symphonic majesty, heightening the intensity of every moment and solidifying their place among cinematic spectacles. While Dae may have sought to catch up to their industry counterparts, they did so with finesse and ingenuity. Return of Daimajin and its companion films bear witness to the studio's commitment to delivering captivating dramas that transcend the boundaries of kaiju cinema. The movie, Wrath of Daimajin, 1966. In the icy grips of winter, a village cowers in fear beneath the wrathful gaze of a mighty deity known as Daimajin. The god's fury eventually subsides, granting a fragile respite to the trembling souls. Amidst this eerie calm, a weary woodcutter named Sampei emerges, his body marked by the trials of enslavement in the treacherous depths of Hell's Valley. With a light of hope in his heart, Sampei recounts his harrowing escape through the treacherous Mountain, his words igniting a flame of determination within the hearts of the remaining villagers. In this dire hour, three courageous boys, Suroshiki, Kinta, and Daisaku, rise to the challenge, vowing to embark on a treacherous expedition through the very heart of Maijan's mountain. Their mission? To traverse the treacherous path to Hell's Valley and rescue their fathers and brothers from the clutches of enslavement. Yet, at the threshold of their odyssey, an enigmatic old woman, a guardian of the mountain, warns them of the vengeful wrath that awaits those who dare to tread upon the sacred domain. Undeterred by the chilling prophecy, the young adventurers push forward, determined to face the perils head-on. However, fate has an unexpected twist in store for them. Their valiant journey is not as solitary as they anticipated, for Tsuro Chiki's younger brother, Sugatatsu, shadows their every step, refusing to be left behind. Reluctantly, the trio welcomes him into their mist, aware of the perils that lie ahead. United by blood, blood and a shared purpose, they march onward, their spirits intertwining like the delicate tendrils of a winter vine. With each step, the boys confront the unforgiving landscape where perils lurk in every shadow. The mountain's icy breath caresses their cheeks, whispering tales of forgotten horrors and challenging their resolve. Yet their bond strengthens, fueled by a fierce determination to restore their loved ones to freedom. In the treacherous depths of Hell's Valley, a sinister plot unfolds under the watchful eye eyes of Daizen Matsunaga, determined to locate the escaped worker who fled through the formidable Maijan Mountain. Matsunaga dispatches three fierce warriors into the heart of darkness. Meanwhile, his lord Arakawa returns with ambitious plans to establish a stronghold within Hell's Valley, harnessing its sulfur springs to produce gunpowder. The workers, gripped by a foreboding sense of uncertainty, ponder their grim destinies as the construction deadline looms. Amidst this perilous landscape, a chance encounter alters the fate of the three young boys. In the aftermath of a treacherous rock slide, they stumble upon a majestic hawk perched atop a tree, a harbinger, according to the enigmatic old woman's words, bearing a message from Daimajin, the vengeful deity. Emboldened by this mystical encounter, the boys make a fateful choice to follow the mountain path, guided by faith and whispered legends. The journey leads them to the imposing statue of the wrathful god, a towering sentinel amidst the desolate landscape. Surochiki, the group's steadfast leader, beseeches Daimajin, his heartfelt prayers echoed by his companions. With renewed determination, they press forward, unaware that their path will soon intertwine with the samurai sent by Lord Arakawa himself. Narrowly evading capture, the boys find themselves thrust into a world of peril and uncertainty. In the depths of Hell's Valley, tragedy strikes when Daisaku's brother, Shohachi, falls victim to the cruelty of their captors. 
cast into the seething sulfur pits as punishment, his fate hangs in the balance. Undeterred by the escalating dangers, the boys encounter the relentless samurai once more, only to have their meager provisions snatched away by the mischievous Sukutatsu. Elsewhere, a group of courageous villagers, led by one of the boys' mothers, embark on a perilous quest to find their missing loved ones. Their journey to Hell's Valley becomes a desperate race against time, tinged with the specter of tragedy and the flickering flame of hope. As the boys attempt to navigate the treacherous river on a makeshift raft, their fragile vessel succumbs to the raging currents, leaving Quinta swept away by the merciless tide. Alone and burdened by grief, the remaining boys seek refuge with the decaying embrace of a towering tree. In the dead of night, a ferocious snowstorm blankets their fragile hopes, testing their resilience in the face of nature's relentless fury. In a climatic climax that will leave audiences on the edge of their seats, Daimajin, Resurgence of the Ancients, delivers an awe-inspiring conclusion to the epic saga. As the weary travelers collapse from exhaustion, their dreams of rescue seem distant, but destiny has a different plan in store. In a stunning twist of fate, the samurai, who had once been their relentless pursuer, became embroiled in a fierce battle with a mysterious hawk. The villagers, drawn to the sacred statue of Daimajin, witness a remarkable sight, the awakening of the ancient god himself. The statue, once motionless and serene, begins to bleed, signifying a profound shift in the balance of power. As Tetsuro Chiki pleads for mercy and redemption for his fallen comrades, Daimajin undergoes a profound transformation. With a thunderous roar, the deity takes on a new form, his wrath and compassion merging in a breathtaking display of divine power. In a miraculous act, Daimajin teleports to the fallen Tetsuro Chiki, reuniting him with his comrades, Kinta and Daisai who had succumbed to the harsh elements. Meanwhile, Lord Arakawa, the embodiment of cruelty and tyranny, prepares to carry out his sinister plan, prepared to cast his enslaved workers into the sulfurous depths. But his twisted ambitions are about to meet their match. With earth-shattering force, Daimajin shatters the valley walls, setting forth on an unstoppable march toward Arakawa. Arakawa's desperate attempts to quell the furious god prove futile as Daimajin hurls logs at his attackers, decimating their ranks. The very foundations of evil tremble as Daimajin obliterates the gunpowder factory, igniting a cataclysmic blaze that engulfs the sulfur-laden air. In a breathtaking display of justice, Daimajin confronts Arakawa, piercing him with a lethal a blow from his sword. United with the woodsmen, the villagers gather in awe and reverence, their prayers echoing through the charred remnants of Hell's Valley. Kneeling before the god of old, they offer their gratitude and faith, recognizing the divine intervention that has saved them from the clutches of darkness. But as swiftly as he emerged, Daimajin retreated, transforming once again into a majestic statue, its stoic visage cloaked in a gentle shroud of snow. The villagers, humbled and forever changed, witnessed the disappearance of their protector, a bittersweet farewell amidst a flurry of winner's embrace. Did the audience feel its wrath? In 1966, the epic tale of the Wrath of Daimajin was brought to the big screen. This action-packed film follows a group of brave children who embark on a dangerous journey to rescue their enslaved fathers and bring peace back to their village. While the third installment may have not hit the mark for some, the first two movies are powerful and gripping dramas that will keep you on the edge of your seat. One of the noteworthy points of the film is that the talented actor Riki Hashimoto, who brought the monstrous Daimajin to life in all three movies. The intricate costume was notoriously heavy, but Hashimoto's masterful movements and intense gaze made the terrifying creature feel all too real. The use of the actor's own human eyes behind the mask added an unparalleled level of intensity that other kaiju films simply couldn't match. Despite their quality, the Daimajin films were tragically short-lived. Three movies were released in the same year and then nothing. No more sequels, no more adventures, until its triumphant return in 2010 with Daimajin Canon, a TV series that gave a modern twist to the classic tale. And now, in a true testament to the enduring popularity of his iconic kaiju, Taikashi Mike has included Daimajin in his upcoming film, The Great Yokai War Guardians, bringing his legendary monster to a whole new generation of fans. It's a strange and winding path for this beloved character, but rather solidifies its position in the chronicles of kaiju history. 
Daimajin Canon 2010 TV series. In Bujin Canon, Canon Mikazaki's dreams are shattered when her treacherous boyfriend steals her family's cherished song and rises to fame. Lost and depressed, she is visited by a spirit who reveals her fate. She must summon an ancient guardian, Bujin, to fight a coming demonic invasion, but the magic only works if Canon sings the song with all her heart. Thus, Canon embarks on a journey to rediscover her passion for singing and humanity aided by a colorful group of guardian spirits. However, time is running out as the demons begin to possess people for their invasion. Can Canon find the strength to summon Bujin and save the world? Bujin Canon is a captivating tale of redemption and heroism, with a unique blend of music and mythology. Daimajin in comics. Daimajin's popularity didn't stop with the big and small screens, but also went on mesmerizing the audience in comic series. Daimajin appeared in a number of comic books like Return of Daimajin, Wrath of Daimajin, Sanso Majin, Common Rider Stronger, etc. Let's discuss more recent ones in detail. Daimajin Canon. Daimajin Canon takes on a new form in this manga adaptation by Sijiro Mitsu, with added layers of sensuality and intrigue. While the original Takusatsu drama series was designed with female viewers in mind, the manga ups the ante by incorporating partial nudity and provocative outfits for the female characters. Mitsu's stunning illustrations capture the essence of Canon Mikazaki's journey to summon the ancient guardian Bujin, while also exploring the complexities of her struggles. Fans of the series are delighted with this visually stunning and provocative retelling of the story. Behind the scenes, the making of Daimajin. Let's take a peek behind the curtain and explore some fascinating facts about Daimajin. The name Daimajin is derived from the Japanese word for giant devil or giant demon god. Interestingly, the creature is hardly ever referred to as Daimajin in the films themselves, with only one character, a priestess named Shinobu, ever using the name. In the first film, the natives of the Hanabusa kingdom primarily refer to the monster as Arakatsuma, while he is more commonly known as god, demon, or devil. In the United States, Daimajin is sometimes referred to as Majin or Giant Majin, with various titles for the films. In the television series Daimajin Canon and the manga adaptation of the Great Yokai War, Guardians, the creature is known as Bujin Sama. In Daimajin Canon, he identifies himself as Omahito, an alternative reading of Daimajin. Additionally, promotional material for Daimajin Canon features a miniature puppet called Bujin Kun, similar in style to the character character Godzaban, used to introduce viewers to the show's setting. Let's unveil some more fascinating behind-the-scenes revelations from the making of the movie. Daimajin's origins can be traced back to the unrealized sequel of the original Gamera film, called Gamera vs. the Space Iceman. In this envisioned sequel, Gamera would have battled a colossal sentient ice statue unleashed by extraterrestrial beings. The design of Daimajin drew inspiration from Neo statues, incorporating elements from various idols and sculptures found across the globe. The meticulous model-making process was led by Ryosaku Takayama, spanning a remarkable three-month period. Takayama and his team crafted two impressive full-scale models, standing at a towering height of 4.5 meters. Additionally, they created two costumes and intricate hand and foot props for capturing close-up shots. However, due to the limitations of movement with the full-scale props, the suits were predominantly used during filming. Riki Hashimoto, the actor portraying Daimajin, had his real eyes visible through the mask to enhance emotional expression. To intensify the character's presence, Hashimoto purposely refrained from blinking during takes, and catch lights were employed to give his eyes a bloodshot appearance. In the climatic scene where Daimajin disintegrates into dirt and crumbles, a model is crafted using genuine soil to achieve a realistic effect. When it came to the sequel Return of Daimajin, a new suit was created by X Productions, taking reference from Takayama's original designs. The decision was made to make the new suit thinner and lighter compared to Takayama's bulkier versions. Interestingly, the suit from Return of Daimajin was repurposed and utilized once again for Wrath of Daimajin, showcasing the practicality and resourcefulness of the production team. <laughs> Daimajin 
Daimajin's impact on pop culture and beyond. During the mid-1960s in Japan, the rise of television posed a significant threat to the film industry. Following the highly successful 1964 Tokyo Olympics, almost every Japanese household owned television, and the allure of the small screen captivated audience day and night. Recognizing this trend, certain television stations began investing hefty sums to deliver cinematic extravaganzas directly to people's living rooms. This new way paved the way for Tsuparaya Productions, groundbreaking series including Ultra Q and Ultraman, both premiering in 1966. In response, Toho's iconic Godzilla franchise had to find ways to deliver awe-inspiring spectacles on tighter budgets. Meanwhile, amidst this fierce competition, Daiei Film Studio had its own ambitious plans. While their celebrated Gamera series featuring a gigantic flying turtle was just taking flight, Daiei sought to explore new territories beyond the realm of hyper-violent creature features aimed at children. Thus, for a remarkable and captivating period spanning approximately eight months, the Daimajin trilogy emerged, establishing its reign as an intriguing and distinct franchise within the kaiju genre. Marvelous Verdict In the vast landscape of Japanese kaiju cinema, the enigmatic figure of Daimajin stands tall, both literally and metaphorically. With its unique blend of supernatural elements, ancient folklore, and breathtaking visuals, the Daimajin trilogy captivated audiences and left a permanent mark on the genre. From its imposing stone form to its awe-inspiring transformations, Daimajin embodied the raw power of nature and the spirit of justice. Beyond its impressive visual spectacle, Daimajin Daimajin's stories explored themes of resilience, sacrifice, and the triumph of human spirit. As the giant demon god turned hero, Daimajin remains an enduring symbol of strength and unyielding fight against tyranny. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!